Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello. My name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today we're going to be talking about five tips and tricks to help make traveling with your pet that much more successful. Before we get too far into the video, I do ask that you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy content like this. I'm also excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Mr. Peanut Pet Carriers. Mr. Peanuts carries a wide selection of different pet carriers that are also airline capable. I personally have the Mr. Peanuts Malibu series backpack pet carrier and this one's really nice because it can be rolled. I'm no stranger to pet carriers, especially the fun backpack kinds. Some of you may know that I have a super senior dog, he's 16 and a half, and he stopped being able to go on hikes with me and my other dogs a long time ago. In order to keep him involved in the fun, he has his very own backpack carrier that I'm able to easily wear and take him out on adventures with me and put him back in if he gets a little tired from walking. Not only are these pet carriers great for travel, but it's also nice for just you know, exploring your own community. I'm also really excited to get one of the Mr. Peanuts carriers for my sister and her cat. She's in the middle of harness training her cat right now, which in and of itself is very exciting and opens up some more opportunities to explore her community with her cat if she'd like. But this is a good option for, you know, traveling to and from locations or areas where you can't necessarily just have your cat hanging out on a harness but you still want them involved in your little coffee shop self-love dates or exploring a nearby park. Any of those fun little activities that most people don't bring their animals to, but you totally could. Another thing I really appreciate about the Mr. Peanut pet carriers are that they're all stylish. I've seen a lot of pet carriers that are bulky or maybe they're a little bit slimmer and sleeker, but they don't look as cute. I think these pet carriers have a much more kind of modern and trendy aesthetic to them, which makes it totally easy to maybe customize a little bit to match your personal style or neutral enough that you can be wearing whatever, have whatever personal style, and this can fit into it pretty easily. The Mr. Peanut pet carriers are airline capable, but you do want to make sure that you're checking with the individual airline, whatever you're flying on, to make sure that you're able to bring your pet aboard and to also make sure that these are carriers that will meet their criteria. Every airline is different, so it's always best to give them a call ahead of time to see what their policies are. If you're interested in checking out any of the Mr. Peanut Pet Carriers or any of the other products that they have on their site, be sure to use the link in my description below. My very first tip when it comes to traveling with your pet is to plan ahead. I personally am a big planner. I like to plan vacations. While I'm not a down to the second itinerary kind of gal, I do like to know, you know where we're going, how we're getting there, where we're staying, what activities are we gonna do? What are we gonna do with the dogs during those activities? Are they coming? Are we kind of try to find a dog daycare? Are we leaving them at the hotel? All of those things I like to have planned out pretty well. That way it keeps things nice and smooth. Spontaneously traveling can be totally fun, but when you're dealing with a pet, it can make things a little bit trickier. Not everywhere accepts dogs, and with the rise of emotional support animals, people think their dogs have more rights than they do. And unfortunately, if you're banking on that title to allow your dog access to places they don't typically have access to, you're probably gonna be pretty disappointed when that's not quite how things work. So planning things out, having a plan, knowing where your dog is going to be at all times during your vacation, during your travels, really helps to avoid disappointment, make sure you can get as much out of your vacation as possible, and helps to just keep things running a lot smoother. Number two, transportation. How are you gonna get to wherever you're going? Oftentimes you have options. You could fly somewhere or you could take a little bit of a longer drive or maybe by boat. Do very many people travel by boat anymore? This one goes kind of hand in hand with tip number one, but you do wanna make sure that you plan ahead how your pet is going to travel. And ideally you wanna put kind of their needs first. Sure, it might be a few hours shorter to fly somewhere than to drive that same distance, but would that be easier on your pet? Not all pets are able to fly in the actual top half of the plane with you. Depending on your airline or the kind of carrier you have, the size of your dog, 
There's a lot of different policies from different airlines that can make traveling and flying with your pet a lot more difficult. So it might be easier to just drive, take public transportation, whatever way you get there. Additionally, your pet's anxiety levels or their temperament might also play a role. If your dog gets really, really anxious, putting them in a completely unfamiliar environment might just make it completely worse. Whereas if they're more familiar with driving in the car, they might do a little bit better. If your dog does have some car anxiety or gets car sick, it might be worth it to try some CBD products. If you're interested in learning more about CBD, I'll definitely leave videos linked up in the top here, as well as in the description. But incorporating some CBD, you know, a few days before your trip might help to take the edge off, allow them to calm down a little bit, and make your drive a lot easier. Brings us to travel tip number three, figure out what you're gonna do for food. If you're incorporating toppers onto your kibble or you're feeding a canned cooked or raw diet like you should and there's tons of resources on this channel to learn more traveling with your dog might be a little bit more complicated when it comes to what they're gonna eat i personally have fully raw fed dogs but when i'm traveling i often change their diet just a little bit to make it easier on all of us if i'm going to a place where i'm unsure if they're gonna have a pet store that carries a food that i would be comfortable feeding I'll bring Honest Kitchen dehydrated food or canned food, freeze-dried raw, and feed that while I'm traveling. This makes it a whole lot easier than trying to lug around, you know, giant bags of frozen meat, and makes feeding my dogs in a hotel room, in an Airbnb, at a friend or family's house that much easier, less explaining to do of why I'm carrying around giant bags of meat, and makes things go a little bit smoother. That said, I would also recommend looking ahead to wherever you're traveling to and seeing if they have an independent pet store that might carry the food that you're feeding or have something comparable. Because I'm me and because I have a job as a dog trainer and pet nutritionist, one of the best places for me to visit while I'm traveling is the local independent pet store. Independent pet store, independent bookstore, those are kind of the things that I seek out and purposely will plan whole days around. Stores like this often carry the higher quality pet food brands that I tend to recommend and a ton of different raw options that I personally feed my dogs. This means that if I wanted to you know, travel six, eight, ten hours away and I know that there's going to be an independent pet store where I'm staying for a while, I can just pick up some raw food while I'm there and my dogs don't have to change their diet too, too much. All that being said, if you are planning on changing your dog's food because you're going on vacation or even if you're just leaving them with a pet sitter while you go have fun, it's always best to do this at least a few days before you leave. When you switch your dog's food or incorporate something brand new, there is a chance that they're gonna have some digestive upset and the last thing you want while you're traveling or leaving your pet with a pet sitter is digestive upset. So by switching over to the new food routine, you know, ideally a week or two ahead of time, helps to set the body up so that you're less likely to have digestive upset, which can be exacerbated by stress. Brings us to number four, uh, that stress aspect. We talked about how changing your dog's food too suddenly while you're traveling can cause some digestive upset, but did you know that change in general can cause digestive upset. When our dogs are too stressed or too overstimulated or too bleh, their bodies might not be digesting their food like they normally do and they're more likely to have some you know, loose stools, some issues. So that's something to take into consideration and maybe bring a couple packets of pumpkin puree with you just to help boost their meals to help give their guts some extra support. Changes in routine can also change your pet's behavior. When I'm dealing with training clients, we often talk about generalization, which is, you know, practicing things in a bunch of different environments around a bunch of different distractions and how that can play a role in training. When new things are added to the environment or things change, it's very likely that your pet is going to regress on training and maybe pick up a couple of temporary bad habits. And these things are really important to know about ahead of time. When your pet is introduced to something completely new and they're constantly taking in all of this brand new information, they're gonna be less likely to you know, sit as soon as you ask. They're gonna be maybe as not strong in the recall. 
you might want to go back to basics with a lot of their training because they're just simply overwhelmed. Our pets generally like routine. They like to be able to anticipate what's coming next. So when we disrupt their routine, it's important to have a management plan in place to help maintain all of the desired behavior while you're in this new environment and while your dog is likely to have that training regression where all the things they were really, really good at before, they might not be so good at now. This includes things like, you know, barriers, baby gates, long lines instead of just having them off leash wherever, and really weighing the risk and reward of different situations of if this is something that your dog is currently capable of being successful in. Number five is taking your pets on vacation should be fun. I find personally at least that there's a lot of guilt in not doing things with my dogs. I love traveling with them, I love hanging out with them, I love doing activities with my dogs, but there are totally times when maybe I just want a break and want to go on my own vacation, and that's totally fine and totally valid. If going on vacation with your pet is more work than it's worth, it's okay to not take them next time. It's okay to have your own little weekend getaways where they stay with a trusted pet sitter and you get some alone time. Going on vacation should be fun, and when you do take your pets, it should be fun for them too. If you're gonna be doing all sorts of fun things that they can't go to and they're gonna be stuck, you know, in a hotel room, in your friend's guest room all day, it's not really fun for them. So oftentimes when I'm taking my dogs on vacation with me, I'll plan that whole vacation around them. If I find something really fun that maybe I wish that I could do, but I have the dogs with me and I don't just want to leave them somewhere for hours, I'll keep a little list and I'll just go again to wherever that is without my dogs at some point in the future, mark off all the fun touristy things on that list, and there we go. And I am going to say this again because I do think that it's really important but it's okay to do things without your pets. That's all for today's video. I hope that you found this helpful and learned a couple of tips to make traveling with your pet more successful next time when you go. Thank you again to Mr. Peanuts Pet Carriers for sponsoring today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a like and comment down below any other pet travel tips that I may have missed, as well as maybe where you'd like to go next on a pet-friendly vacation. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and if you'd like more content, I do have an Instagram account that you can follow. At tattoo.dogtrainer is my personal account, more of the youtube side of things. You also have at topdogbehavior, which is my business account, where you can get daily content on training, nutrition, and pet care right to your feed and learn a little bit more every day. Thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!